like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars now this is the meat of my teaching and i want you to please pay attention god's reward principle i want to teach you how god rewards men now that you know that he rewards now that you know why we need to be rewarded because there has to be a token expressions of consolation to our christian experience most believers know that god rewards but they do not know how the reward system of the kingdom works and so they are they live very sincere lives holy and righteous lives but they do not live rewarded lives god's reward principle hallelujah mark chapter 1 i'll begin my reading from verse 32 please pay attention now down to 37 i want to show you how god programmed his reward system to work and in the name of jesus christ may your eyes be open to see Amen. at evening when the sun did set they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils 33 all the city was gathered together at the door can you imagine and he healed many that were uh, that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed 36 and simon and they which and they that were with him followed after him take note of that statement followed after him 37 the last verse now and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for thee help us holy spirit in the name of jesus christ now please look up god designed the reward system of the kingdom god designed the reward system of the kingdom to function based on the discovery the development and the deployment of your gift god designed the reward system of the kingdom listen carefully please that the reward system of the kingdom was designed to function based on the discovery number two the development or refining number three the deployment of your gift are we together the bible says the gift of a man is that in your bible the gift of a man make it room for him proverbs 18 and verse 16 the, a man's gift he says make it room for him i think um either international standard version or god's word translation would say the gift of a man can open doors thank you D giving a gift can open doors i think god's word translation would say a man's gift can open doors for him it can give him access to important people nlt here says back to kjv please that the gift of a man can make room for him and can bring him before great men many believers do not understand why it looks like in the kingdom where everybody is serving the same god god seems to isolate a few people and to lift them and to honor them as against others not understanding the reward system of the kingdom makes god look unfair until this lecture comes to your spiritual understanding it makes a lot of sense to look at god as one who just manifests favoritism lord it looks like you rejected everybody from this family it looks like you have a personal problem with my ministry it looks like you have a personal problem with my business why is it that i'm, I'm not able to rise and make maximum kingdom impact you may love god sincerely you will get the benefits of loving God. But there are certain things in this kingdom.
that are rewards and if you do not understand the reward system of the kingdom you may live a sincere but frustrated christian life hallelujah write this down please the word gift there does not just mean a presentation like something you package the word gift there also means your value v-a-l-u-e write it down please the word gift there also means your skill it also means your potential it also means your ability i'll take it again your value your skill your potential your ability everything in your life that constitutes an advantage to you and can become a blessing as far as god's program is concerned and humanity is called your gift everything that constitutes an advantage to your life and can be deployed to serve the purposes of god and to be a blessing to humanity is what the bible refers to as your gift so your gift is not just something that you hand over no it, it it's it's a word that captures holistically your value your skill listen carefully whether spiritual whether technical whatever it is in the scripture we read mark chapter 1 the bible tells us when we begin to read verse 32 that at evening people came to jesus watch this now they didn't just come to sit down and waste their time the bible says they brought people who were diseased they brought people who were possessed with devils i wish we had time to act a little drama here imagine right now on this stage are we together having someone who is a madman someone who is sick let's say with an incurable disease and the family would have spent millions of naira trying to remedy for that situation and here comes a man that they hear do you know at the point of need you have the faith to take unbelievable risks at the point of need you will when they tell you you are about to lose someone and they say if you can get to port Accord by tomorrow morning there is a consultant he's one of the top 50 in the whole world and i mean he can solve this problem you will be surprised where you will invent energy from even if it means to drive all through the night not by a luxurious bus it's better for you based on that situation to beg an arm robber on the road than to sit down and not do anything it is amazing what people can do when they are pushed to the wall so don't take for granted that the bible says they brought to him those that were diseased remember the guy that they tore a roof to put someone there one thing you need to know with men is that at the point of need people are desperate let me repeat myself again at the point of need people are desperate whether spiritual need whether financial solutions whether technical solutions the moment people are in need and they cannot solve that problem for themselves they become desperate and it puts them in a position where they are ever willing to reward provided the solution is guaranteed is someone learning tonight respectfully speaking i've had the honor of praying for people i am amazed at the sacrifices that people make because they hear that i'm around or they hear that i can be available either to pray for them and sometimes i'm humbled our international guests here can travel from distances as far back as australia not for a miracle service and they say apostle i flew just to have if i could have five minutes with you i know my life will change now i'm not just excited that they flew to see me i'm seeing the burden of trust that someone can leave a travel over two days journey to come and spend five minutes who do you think you are if they perceive you to be that valuable then it's impossible for you to be without reward the magi heard that a young boy a young baby was born and that by prophecy that baby would be a king the bible says they shut down on their activities and they carried gifts is that in your bible of gold frankincense and myrrh is one thing for them to go and worship but then they started searching for where baby jesus was not miracle worker jesus baby jesus until they found him and they worshiped and they gave him those gifts 
you have no idea the reward system that can stand at the corridor of your destiny when value is not a question are we together now now we live in a world that is largely superstitious unfortunately even for africa and while i believe in the supernatural absolutely and forever it is important for us to define intelligently and spiritually the modus operandi of god's reward system so that we don't leave ourselves in all kinds of blind superstition that will keep leaving us in pain and regret are we together write this down please your value put in bracket every other thing i said your ability your gift your value decides who pursues you and decides the extent of your reward your value decides who pursues you or who seeks you and decides the extent of your reward hallelujah it is amazing and even incredible from a professional standpoint that there are certain professions in this nation and globally speaking that if you do pay the price to be able to attain onto a point of mastery in that profession the only thing that can stop you from rising are demon spirits but as far as the communication of value is concerned where your your own is to labor and to pay that price there is such a demand and that people will be willing one time i had the privilege to pray for someone who um they wanted to fly somebody a, one of their sons or so to fly him to one of these nations i think india or the us for a kidney transplant and so i was discussing with them and when they told me what they were going to spend plus accommodation because it's not that you just go there and turn around and come back plus accommodation and everything my heart almost dropped i said all this and the person who is going to do it will be somebody like me but is he really like me there's something that person has acquired and while you are threatened the person will calm you down and say that's all right and within two three days they have done a complicated surgery are we together now how do you expect to reward that person who has now preserved a life the same way you would otherwise now i'm speaking in a society where meritocracy is respected i'm not speaking is with the assumption of a corrupt free wickedness free society are we together because the template we have in africa does not make my teaching to make sense to many people because someone by wickedness can access a level of wealth where you now say where are those who are rich you will stand up it did not come by value and most young people right now are already throwing away value and the dignity of kingdom integrity because it looks cheaper and faster to bend over backwards hallelujah so from a professional standpoint the bible says that this man ran and came to jesus one time in his crusade he was teaching in a room and they came wanting him to heal a man and those guys could not have their way it was clear that nobody would give them attention please can we move this crippled man to jesus they said don't even disturb us you don't know the situation that i have to and they said you know what we will negotiate with the owner of this house let's tear the roof my goodness imagine that man. and jesus called that act of madness faith that men can be so desperate i always give this example um sorry to bring bad memories but during the um i think it was ensas no 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 was it ensas protest where they boggled warehouses across several states most people in that state did not know that those things were warehouses or they passively they never paid attention to how people discovered the warehouses with bags of rice and indomie and you needed to see unity without any salmon some who could fly are we together 
I mean, gentlemen will rise and you would see people. Nobody asks about tribe and religion again. It was intelligence with coordination. No ushers, no protocol, no worship team to charge any atmosphere. But I mean, you listen, 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 listen. I'm just showing you that that is how far human beings can be organized at the point of desperation. Imagine what men will do for you when they discover the unique expression of God's gift upon your life and its ability to contribute to their well-being. Most of us take for granted and we have no idea the problems that people go through every day. Now you see several people come here by the grace of God and thousands others following online. Let me tell you the truth. It is true that most people love Jesus and they love me and I'm grateful for that. But let me submit to you that nobody will come and sit down and waste their three, four, five hours. From as early as eight o'clock, nine o'clock, there are people here sitting down as though they don't have what to do. You think human beings are that stupid? Say value. One encounter, genuine encounter by the Spirit and pages of your life can open just like that. It was said during the days of the, the revival of God's generals that meetings would be happening maybe 6 p.m. and by 12, 2 p.m. you would see people queuing up, patiently waiting, praying in tongues and inventing all kinds of skills to draw energy until that time. Listen, can I tell you, the proof that you are not valuable or you have not developed your value is that your absence means nothing to those around you. When your absence means nothing to those around you, it means your presence is not contributing anything serious. Please listen carefully. I'm provoking you for a reason. You know how valuable you are by the reaction that happens with your absence. Jesus disappeared for three days and the disciples wanted, they were almost dying. They had to say, look, let's go back to fishing. And when Jesus came up, there are many of you, if in your workplace, you decide to take a break for two weeks, you will return back and they'll say, it looks like we've not seen your face. You say, well, I've not been around. You say, oh, no wonder. But absolutely nothing changed with your absence. That should not be so. You should be such a contributor, first to kingdom come and then to your environment, that the slightest manifestation of your absence will be felt so deeply. That is a sign that you are valuable. Hallelujah. The gift of a man make it room for him and brings him before great people. Listen. When God was preparing me for ministry, this was one of the things I learned, especially from great fathers and veterans like Dr. Miles Monroe. Because at that time, many people had a lot of superstitious approach to ministry. They just believed that once your heart was sincere, without any development, any refinement, you just make sure your heart is pure towards God. Eventually, you will become great. It didn't make even spiritual sense to me. Because Jesus, even though he was the son of God, it took him 30 years of preparation. And the Bible did not hide his diligence. What will the son of God, the logos of God, be doing at the temple at age 12? For 18 solid years, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was preparing for a ministry of three and a half years. John, the prophet, was in the wilderness even though a prophet from God, he did not spare his training. Can I tell you sincerely, please hear me ladies and gentlemen. There are many of you who have not been able to make full proof of your ministry. Your ministry, they are not just fivefold, but every expression of value that you were sent by God to bring to your world. Because you do not know that your reward depends on your gift. Most people say my reward depends on God. You are not lying. But you need to understand how his economy works. As sincere as you are as a CEO, as born again as you are, if someone comes to tell you I'm a member of Koinonia, please employ me. Let me be, um, 
the person to handle all your finances i'm honest you will tell the person is well eh? write your prayer point because that is a prayer point and go and drop it at the miracle service but you will not employ the person why because even though the person has told you he's a christian you will need to be able to vet his proficiency and that without any biases or prejudices there are many people who downplay the place of value and sacrifice listen to me the reward system of the kingdom i repeat again is connected to value years ago this my precious people in the worship team they were itching so much to find expression they wanted to go for meetings any meeting at all and i stopped them i said you are not going anywhere you guys want aside from blessing the lord you want to be local champions who will be angry competing with one another and fighting and insulting those who go ahead of you that is the trajectory the sad trajectory of mediocres they usually will do very small and not rise then they become frustrated because everyone goes and leaves them they have to coin out a justification and the way they do that is by fighting everyone and everything ahead of them it ought not to be so I remember challenging them and I said sit down I love you people but the songs you are bringing the nations cannot bless the Lord with that kind of investment stay and build yourself today to God be the glory you celebrate what they are doing you see and even today it's not like I'm done with them praise God remember I said thousand cubits after they measure it you rest then another tape comes again my dear violinist when he he sent me a text to appreciate me and i said young man you are doing well may god bless you i said but go and rehearse there's so much you need to learn don't think because people you played violin go and rehearse i know the sound of excellence and quality go and rehearse build yourself again can i tell you when people raise a very high bar for you it's because they want the hope the nation to celebrate god in your life this mediocre mentality we have that has endorsed mediocrity you find out that people never rise for doing nothing we keep clapping for ourselves as a man of god you preach a sermon that even you you know that's not what god told you you know that the holy spirit cannot breathe upon such a dull sermon spiritually and intellectually dull okay forgive yourself and go back and walk you just assume because somebody who is your friend forever just came and said what a brilliant sermon I, and you actually believe that lie now it's not about competition but you need to charge yourself i listen to all my teachings for two reasons one to be blessed by it but number two to make sure i never remain at that level it is a rule and a covenant without excuse listen until you give your pursuit in life and destiny a business approach a business approach meaning you have to be strict with yourself don't match yourself, write an exam and organize speech and price for yourself for doing nothing. There are nations, there are territories. Now God is sending us to the United Kingdom. You can imagine the hunger, tens of thousands of people coming. And there comes an ill-prepared preacher, not knowing what he's doing. You stand and you don't know what to say. Then you tell them God is going to move, nothing happens. You tell them God will heal, nothing happens. You quote all kinds of wrong scriptures. No. No. Can I tell you, I have taught you that there are many closed doors in our lives that are a sign of God's mercy. Because if that door had opened with our level of ill preparedness, it would take a long time to get those doors to open again so god closes those doors as a sign of his mercy and challenges you to prepare joseph make sure you are ready for pharaoh before you ask the wine presser to make him remember you because when you stand before pharaoh it is a dream to interpret if joseph had messed up he will go back to the prison and remain there forever i made up my mind that i was not only going to be a spiritual preacher 
but that my communications will come with a blend of spirituality and intelligence for God's sake that when you are teaching people they must find a point of applicability there must be intelligence no matter the mysticism and how a mysterious what you are communicating is learning from Jesus you must be able to break down kingdom mysteries in a way and to a context that people can understand and find a point of applicability in their lives are we together? 